Shmalo, everyone. I have no idea where I left off. <laughs> no, I'm not even kidding. Oh man, I just remembered. I was supposed to um, supposed to do the shrines. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's any big secret. You guys can obviously tell every time I every time I start a new episode, I am literally standing in the exact same spot from the from the previous episode. <sighs> Wait, I thought there was a chicken in front of me. Never mind. There we go. We did, it, boys. We got a uh, got the perfect speed run, chicken percent. <laughs> but recently, there's actually been a really weird speed run for Breath of the Wild. It's uh, obviously just for a goof, but um, it's uh, what's it called? Get laid percent. <laughs> yes, I get laid, which I believe the idea is. You're supposed to go to Kakariko Village, um, do the whole like dialogues thing, and then wait for Paya to walk into her room, and then that that that's a whole joke. That like basically, um, <laughs> you just you just go to Paya inside her room, and that's you know you get laid. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm actually gonna try. Okay. Oh, where is it? Oh, I think it went too far away for the camera. Yeah, as you can see it, what I was trying to do is... Yeah, I'm trying to get the cricket. Hmm. Nope, nothing, I guess. Alright. Yeah, for me the little animals are the like the little critters are the most uh, are the hardest ones to take photos of. Yeah, so basically, uh, Paya, she will not, she will actually not uh, enter Impa's house. Like you know, her house. It's where she she also rests. Um, she won't enter there unless um, you you interact with her. You know. Real quick, this is a stone talus. This is a monster that just heads up. Oh wait, can I take a picture from over here? Right, hopefully I can take... There we go. It's a fox. So, yeah, so basically she's always going to be outside. Like, I believe she's like uh, washing the floor or something. You know, like with a, with a cloth. Alright, let me just show you my strategy now that if you have bombs plus it just fa just think about it, it's faster. Anyway, like I was mentioning, um, get laid percent is basically just do the whole dialogue thing and uh, get her go inside and then uh, just take off all of your clothes <laughs> while she's inside her room. <laughs> so throw this, blow up those two, f oh, not both of them. Yeah, so you can use your bombs to explode that. He'll fall down like, oh no, that hurt. Oh wait, I think I missed. You see that big black rock up there? Yeah, that's your that's your target. Oh, like that. Yeah, boom. Wait, why am I not getting it? Okay, I'll try again. So basically, each time he does this, just blow up the arm that he recovers. Chuck it. There we go. It does actually a decent amount of damage. So the only reason I do this is because the uh, the other alternative the other alternative is to stand from a distance and shoot a bow and arrow at it, which is which sucks because it, it's really hard to aim for that one area. Um, or just climb on top of him every time he tumbles down, but he shakes you off and stuff. Also, um, these arms, the reason they're destroyable is because if he has both of them, like, you know how he, when he stood up, uh, he only had one arm? Yeah. If you step on top of him, he'll actually have both arms. And the idea is that he's gonna chuck them at you, like projectiles. Just like that. Oh, dear lord. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, God. Perfect. If you're, if you're feeling greedy, you can try getting two. And that actually makes him stumble again. Oh, dude. I actually have a really good vantage point. Oof. But I tried... Try making, like, preventing yourself from, uh... Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is very weird. He's not supposed to just keep... Yeah, okay, never mind. Now, now it's normal. Yeah, because he's supposed to want to, um, just immediately regrow an arm. Alright. By the way, I, I'm not sure if you've uh, noticed, but he's actually dropping a piece of amber. <sighs> yeah, so... There, there's actually some versions of these that uh, only drop rare like precious. Well, not only, but they have an increased rate for like diamonds and sapphire and stuff like you know like rare ore deposits. Uh, and there's also one that's for luminous stone. That's something we haven't even dealt with so far. Um, it's just glow it's just basically a glow in the dark rock. <laughs> um, you actually need it to get, uh, unlock, like to purchase. Um, a special costume. Alright, so there we go. Yeah, this fight is honestly pretty hard from time to time. Alright, there we go. Um, I believe that's actually all the pieces of amber. Um, yeah, I think so. And once again, every blood moon, that thing will come back. There's one actually on the Great Plateau. Just look for a heads up. Um, I never bothered fighting it. I don't know why. Mighty carp, mighty carp. Okay. Uh, hmm. Oh, well, you know what? I know what we're going to... <laughs> hey, Ferb, I know what we're going to do today. <laughs> Wait, okay, that's actually that's probably copyrighted. Oh my god, th that thing just drowned. Oh, come on, come on, no. There we go. We have the first sparrow. Oh, the bird's actually scared away. You know, speaking of which, I should probably put on my mask so I don't have any problems. Part of me doesn't want to put on the mask because, uh, you know, I feel like that might be cheating from time to time, but honestly, uh, you can run away from enemies in this game. It's not that hard. Ooh, this is actually worth it. Uh, oh, in case you're wondering, bees are not actually registered in the, uh, in the compendium. I always thought that was kind of weird. Like, bees don't count as a, as something you can collect. I, always, I find that weird because in other games, um, you actually use bees to kill, like, enemies and stuff. Yeah, I always thought that was funny. Oh, wait. I think that's a deer, probably. There. It's a doe. Sorry. Oh. Oh, look at the little guy. Okay. Oh, oh, there we go. And check it out. We got two more photos. We have Bokoblin Arm and Boko Spear. There we go. <laughs> so, the other day a friend was actually talking. We were talking like, hey, what, what's like something you, you would really love to do? Um, and like the whole premise of the question was like, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be like evil or anything. Just like something that's like borderline, like, like it's not evil inherently or anything. It, it's just that like, it's not, it's not, it's not nice. Um, and I always said that I, I immediately knew what I wanted to say. It's going to be, um. One day I'm just gonna go into like a, a diner. Like it doesn't matter. Uh, I hop Denny's norms. Um, I'm I'm just gonna demand an extra chicken tender. 
but like aggressively, and, <laughs> and then he, he would like to spice things up. Uh, you know, in in the in the chapter where I, I de Night Warden demands chicken tendies, and then like pull out my uh, pull out a seventy seventy five Magnum. Is is the, is there a seventy five Magnum? I think it's forty five caliber. <laughs> but I just pull out a Magnum, and I'm just gonna be like, uh, uh, "Hey, lady, uh, give me because it's a waitress, and it's like, hey, lady, uh, I'm counting five chicken tendies, but today I feel like six. And, you know, like I pull back the hammer. <laughs> Where am I even going with this? <laughs> you know, speaking about waitresses, uh, um, like, have you ever, have you ever dared to tell a waitress named Wendy, like, hey, Wendy, have you ever thought about working at Wendy's? You get a, you get a real rush out of it. <laughs> You're like, oh no, I know it's disrespectful, but I need the truth. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna have to cheat here, in a sense. I just realized, because it seems to be no way I can make it up this way. Yeah, part part of this game is also figuring out how how to climb stuff. Okay, there we go. Yeah, if I make it into this little pocket over here, I should be able to last long enough. Oh wow, this is actually interesting. Wait, no, is that daylight or is that snow? Okay, good. It's not snow. It's daylight. Yeah, well, it's um, just supposed to re represent clear skies. Oops. Okay, I, I can still make it. Never mind. <laughs> I pressed X because I wanted to do the first jump. Yeah. Once again, heads up. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it before, but if you press X. While you're walking towards the wall, you're gonna do a primary jump. That's gonna help you basically save three seconds. Oh man. Um, I think I yeah I have a hammer. Never mind. Only amber. Only amber. I don't think I have that much great luck in this playthrough. It's not like I have bad luck, it's just that I had more luck in my first playthrough. Oh. Mountain Goat. Okay, there we go. I think I got it. Yeah. Um, where am I even heading? I have to check every. Okay, so basically, the, here's the peak of awakening. I'm going to head, and like, honestly, just pay close attention. I'm heading to this area. This is a gate. I'm not going to this area of the gate. I'm going to this area. Because there's actually a really strong monster there. I don't even know if I have enough gear to take it on. Because, well, it depends on what color it is. Oh yeah, I should I should talk about that. Um, the coolest thing happened. I I think in the last episode, I mentioned something like, "Oh, you, you need more experience." Um, and I did mean that in the sense of like just uh, experience, as in like playing the game. But apparently, like a week ago, I I only saw it like yesterday. But a week ago, someone made a video, um, about uh. There's, there's supposed to be like a hidden EXP system in the game that basically based off of like the quality uh, of weapons you collect, the quality of uh, like the caliber of enemies you fight and, and like successfully kill, the game is giving you like points to upgrade stuff around you. Yeah, I mentioned like, oh, this, this weapon of the ninja is level one and there's a level two version. Yeah, so that that is technically true that at some point every every ninja will give you the level the level two version instead of the as opposed to the level one. Um and that's because oh hold on, let me put on the warm doublet. And that's all because of uh <laughs> there's only a Korok up here. And that's because of like how much how many times you kill them, how you know 
how many enemies you've killed overall. I just thought it was really cool. Alright, so I believe I'm looking the wrong way. I'm, I have to go over here. Oh yeah, there's the, there's the little forest thing. So just glide down here. I'm going to the exact spot where I showed you on the map. Yeah, it's really nice here. Also, one comment I want to get by because I was talking to a friend about Breath of the Wild. And he's not, well, he's not exactly a, a Zelda fan. He's played multiple Zelda games. And in my opinion, he's played the suckier ones. <laughs> So like he doesn't have the best under his tool belt. Can you see the monster that I'm scared of from here? Uh, yeah, you can. Lionel. Oh no, wait, wrong one. There we go. So yeah, he's basically a centaur. And uh, be careful approaching him from up here because he has... Uh, bows and arrows and he will honestly wreck you <laughs> so just, just be careful gliding because like I, I from where I was I actually uh, made contact with him oh well with the mask he doesn't really notice you but um regardless I, I he noticed me from all the way up there and he shot arrows and I thought oh man the idiot he just aimed straight up but no he actually got me I was really surprised Alright, so around here there should be a memory. Okay, there's a blue moblin. Yeah, for example, this blue moblin. So the enemy ranks go from red, which is the dumbest, the easiest. Because, yeah, the AI is very dumb. You know, like, they'll, they'll take time between their attacks. They sometimes won't raise their shield. You know, like, they're easy. Um, also, they won't take opportunities when they see them. Um, blue is basically, in my opinion, is not harder, like smarter AI. It's that they have more health. You know, like they might be a little smarter, but in, in overall, they have more health. Next level is black. At this point, they are smarter and stronger. And then the next one is white. We, well, it's like a silvery color. You know, I think they actually call them silver. But uh, the silver um, monsters, because there's Lizolfos. Moblins, Bokoblins, whatever. It, they're all silver. The silver ones are the toughest ones. They actually always drop um, a precious stone. And yeah, they're really hard to fight. They have a ton of health. They're strong also. And they usually have high quality weapons. Alright, so... Huh... Oh, I made a mistake. So basically, I want to look up the quest log. So, log mementos. Yeah, where do these come from? Impa has the answer. So basically, I made a mistake. Right here where I'm standing, there's supposed to be a little yellow spot that shows you, oh, here's the memory. You're Apparently, you're supposed to go talk to Impa, then come back here. So, um, in case... Because I don't think my friend's going to be watching this and playing at the same time. Like, no, he's not going to be following me exactly. So just heads up. As soon as you unlock the memory pictures, go back to talk to Impa. Then you can follow the path I took if you want. Like, honestly, the, the I'm going to go fight this thing. But if uh, like, you do not have to fight the Talus, you do not have to fight the Lino. To be honest, I don't even think I can take on the Lionel with the gear I have, but I'm going to try. Alright. Wood Pigeon. Yeah, so right now he's going to pay attention to you. If you have the mask, he won't do anything. He'll just literally stay still. Okay, so now I'm going to go in here. So what's the best defense I can build up? Five, four, and five. So I can have a maximum of 14. Yeah. So just... Alright, he's going to... Okay, don't worry about him because he always does that little cycle. Oh man, I'm trying to do the perfect dodge. I need to get closer. There. Yeah, in case you're wondering, for perfect dodge, you cannot be far away. You have to be a certain distance close. 
Yeah. It's gonna break. Um. Yeah, farming, huh? Yeah, so as you, you can tell, I tried to switch while I was still in the quick attack thing, and it didn't let me hit equip. I just pressed B quickly. But it's because you need to be out of a certain frame. So basically, you can't strike with a weapon and then pull one out. It technically, ha the, the item has to be back in the backhand motion. Oh god. Yeah, so this one dodged sideways. <laughs> And break. Yeah, so he has three basic attacks, which is the 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 X scissor attack where he, he slams both arms like scissors. Um, that one just jump backwards. Also, the the quick fire sword attacks where he just does back and forth like three or four times. And then there's the whole he he even like puts his sword and his shield away as you saw, and he just charges at you like a wild animal. Yeah, so. Once you learn those patterns, you're going to be pretty good. Um, I guess a hammer. Yeah, you can see this one has the most range. So this one, if you're a little far away, you'll have a good chance of, you know. Yeah. And remember, once you do a uh, flurry rush, this quick strike thing, you're going to have plenty of time to... Uh, because like his whole cycle resets. That one you can actually do a backflip, and that'll be a good enough to to dodge. Um, yeah, I just need to wait like an extra nanosecond. Yeah, there we go, in order to do it correctly. But like, I I don't want to put myself in too much danger. There we go. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to win this fight. Cause you can see his health up there and like I well uh, if anything I guess the hammer is actually helping me out I'm not sure if we can pick up in my microphone how fast I'm pressing the attack button you can only hit a certain amount of time so don't worry about like hitting it like oh over hitting or anything oh this one's the easiest to dodge <laughs> at least for me it, it's always been the easiest There we go. Oh god. I really feel like I messed up that one. Uh, Traveler sword. There we go. <laughs> also, I love the trees in this area because you can honestly use it to as a buffer. Like basically he will he will like stagger. Like you just saw right there, he staggered at it. Oh, and also, um, I, I always thought that maybe that this was the first time Lynels appeared in the game, but no, actually, they were in the first Legend of Zelda. Like, I'm talking about, I'm talking about like the NES one, like, was it called the NES? Yeah, I'm talking about the original Legend of Zelda. You know, the 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 eight bit one. Yeah, the, apparently Lynels were in that game. They're also in um, the 3DS game. Uh, Link Between Worlds and like the original version of that 3DS game uh, Link to the Past Oh, he actually bumped into the mountain I, and that never happened well, At least I never seen that happen personally Okay Hmm I know that at the end of the day I'm probably gonna end up using all of these Okay. By the way, this sh this shield that they have um, is like sick, to be honest, because you can actually, um, you know, the little uh, A function, the A button, parries stuff. Basically, you can block stuff or or shoot laser beams from the robots back at them. If you use it with this shield at a regular enemy when they're not attacking, um, uh, you can actually cut them with the blade. And I always like that function. Uh, I I want to save. The Eightfold Blade and the Guardian Sword, just in case you're wondering. I'm gonna use the Traveler's Claymore next. Oh, did you see the little sparks that he made against the tree? That's awesome. 
<laughs> oh, he did more sparks. I wonder if, we, if the tree's gonna fall down. Oh god. I feel like now that he has more space. Oh, never mind. Eh. <laughs> yeah, and also they're basically centaurs that have lion, uh, lion's heads. Okay, now he's gonna do it. Yeah, so basically he has this cycle of just shooting fireballs. He shoots three fireballs at you for for the remainder for a short while. That fire will rage on, but don't worry about it. Just avoid it. You could technically use that fire to fly up and um, and shoot arrows, but I don't recommend that because trust me, his bow can actually shoot um, three arrows at the same time, and he has better arrows than you. <laughs> so basically, it's a losing battle every time when you pull out bows and arrows. Wait until you're overpowered. Oh. Okay. Also, you can um, run up to him and uh, ride him like a horse. And then while you're riding him, because he does buck you, like he does try to knock you off, um, uh, you can actually uh, hit him with whatever weapon you have. You know, just just like uh, give it. It's like a freebie, a few freebie hits. Oh gosh. Um. Yeah. So this fight. It's pretty hard right now, but it gets progressively harder. I, I actually like how this fight always gets um, more and more difficult. The progression is crazy. Because like later on he gets new attacks like he can um, he can let out a roar like basically the roar is just to let you know oh I'm doing that attack next. Um, and he just lets out like a mini explosion. Also he slams his weapons and uh, it, it has like a little shockwave. Yeah, I always say how I don't like violence and like I'm not much of a fighter. Like I don't I don't play games for the fighting mechanics to be honest. Uh, no, well, not I don't want to sound like like I'm I'm like oh I'm anti fighting. Just that, like for example, Breath of the Wild, I didn't think I was gonna end up loving the fighting mechanics as much as I did. I was more in this for the adventure mechanics, you know. Okay. Oh, we're actually almost done with this fight. Oh, <laughs> that's actually the first time I hit him, um, like normally. You don't really have to run, I just do it uh, like to, as a nice buffer. Yeah, so this game is honestly just recognizing how to build buffers between enemy fights. Oh yeah, I completely forgot because I, I'm always close to him as you can tell. But right now he kind of lunged at me with that attack. So yeah, apparently... Uh, those, those that attack is ranged, and also I guess a good good thing to notice. I'm, I'm assuming that people notice by now, but every time you manage to get a, um, you know, uh, I just call it a, a quick attack, but the the flurry rush. Sorry, but every time you do this quick attack thing, um, his uh, his fight cycle like resets. So like I always thought that was really cool. So like you're not gonna hit him and then he's gonna swing the sword back at you. Like you see, like he just resets. Oh god. Let me actually heal up. Alright. Okay. Oh also in case you're wondering, um I think this one's actually, I, I'm, I think this one's actually stronger than the one they they force you to fight. But there's actually going to be one time that they force you to fight a Lionel. There you go. So you can tell how many weapons it, it took up. But uh, to, to be to be fair, uh, not all of them were like the best caliber weapons. Okay, Lionel sword, Lionel shield. Uh, Lionel bow. So let's check our spoils of battle. So this is a 24 strength sword. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a single-handed blade, which I I, I honestly love single-handed blades. These things, honestly, they're 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 pretty good to sell as monster parts. Um, 
the, don't use them in recipes because just because they're from a Lionel, well, because they're from a Lionel, they do increase the price. But honestly, at that point, find a good recipe, then use it with this. Like, don't just use it willy nilly. Like, look it up online, to be honest. Uh, Lionel Shield. Lionel Blow. Yeah. Okay, so you see that 10 times 3? Yeah, and whenever a weapon says times three, that means that no matter what arrow you, you're, you're using, it will shoot three at the same time. So it's like a triple strike, and there's a five times um, multiplier as well. Okay. And then, um, hmm. There we go. Uh, there's one more monster over here. I don't want to fight it. Remember the feet, the Hinox? The one that was a skeleton from the other day. Uh, there's actually a, a live version right here. And once again, the color scaling is, you know, according to like how I said earlier, that the there's red followed by blue followed by black. And actually with Hinox, um, I'm assuming because they're such big enemies, it only goes up to level black. So there's no silver Hinox. All right. So, uh, you know what, that, that'll be my punishment, I'll have to come back here later. So, um, I guess for the memories, how about we mark it, um, as a treasure chest. Yeah, so right here is a memory, I'm gonna save you some time. Um, Proxim Bridge. I believe somewhere around here is the... I'm going to spitball and say it's right here. Uh, the one I showed you from the other day. And I can't recall. <laughs> like not with the map in this current state. I can't recall everything. I'm pretty sure I'm missing a bunch of stuff over here. You know what? Let's go to Impa. Just so that we can. You know we, we are capable. Uh, we're capable of actually proceeding. <laughs> you know, talking about, um, I, it's because I, I mentioned, um, a waitress named Wendy and I'll probably fly over everyone's heads, but except for my friends and yeah, um, <laughs> that, that was always my line to Wendy, a waitress that I mean, some of my friends and I, like we, we go, uh, uh, like to, to her place of business. She's a waitress. And I always say, like, hey, Wendy, uh, wouldn't it be funny if you worked at a Wendy's? Well, like, yes, I know it's a dumb joke. And, like, that's the thing. She knows she knows me, so she knows I'm not saying it to be mean to her or anything. I'm, I'm just I'm just stupid. <laughs> mm. uh, like, with certain people, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm perfectly fine with being stupid, you know? Yeah, I heard Perot was giving you the runaround. You seem just fine. I'm here to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. Will Para work at Para's? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so this is actually pretty cool. Like, um, the Sheikah Slate that you're using is actually the one that belonged to Princess Zelda. Yeah, so she's gonna say, go to each of those locations and recover it. Um, hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm very sorry, my lord. Hey, I wonder, can I take a photo of the weapon? Oh, this is sick. So this is the Eightfold Blade, and this is the Fenric Bow. Fenric Bows are actually sick as... <laughs> I'm sorry, I was going to say a bad word. But they're super sick, because um, they can act, they actually zoom in onto like what you're, you're aiming for. I honestly love that function. Oh yeah, just one last thing. So he's like, yeah, you're a fellow traveler. Yeah, he's traveled everywhere. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, yes, I understand. So before he helps you out, he wants a picture of the Great Fairy Fountain. Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna end the episode right here for now. So, see you guys later. I'm not sure where he's running to. I think he just runs close to where the Fairy Fountain is. So, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Uh, thanks for watching me beat up monsters. Finally, a game where I can beat up stuff. 
I literally have like two or three episodes in uh, in my Xenoblade Chronicles 2, uh, well, the DLC playthrough, uh, titled Watch Me Get Beat Up, <laughs> just like I get beat up again, um, where, where literally like 45 or 50% of the episode is just me dying. So I, I I feel great that in this game I'm much more com- competent and and confident. So uh, on that note, I'll see you guys later, Shmelo. I'll I'll talk about Wendy later. <laughs> see ya.